Okay, so today I'm going to do a, a mini review of this uh, Slinky brand electric motor which uh, lets you build an electric motor and put it on a little boat comes with a propeller and um, I already put it together but I'm going to tell you what I went through so uh, the instruction manual is not bad at all uh, you do have to read it very carefully and I would recommend going through the parts and then doing a quick um, read through the instructions before you begin uh, this shaft is a metal rod that comes with the kit uh, like I mentioned, I already put it together, but I'll give you enough information so that you can do it as well. Um, and the the key is that there's a piece of it that will be notched. And what you want to do is make sure you identify that. And then uh, when you're putting it together, uh, it'll be key which way that goes. The um, other key piece of it are these little brushes. And they go in the uh, plastic, in the, in the plastic bow, they go right there. Uh, and I made just a very couple very minor modifications to this. The diagram shows you how to connect it to the brushes and then you're going to connect a little bit of the wire that comes with it. In the instructions it would have you put it through a couple of little holes that it has drilled by default and then it would say take it out the bottom but what I did is I drilled a third little hole with my, uh, my electric drill and that way the wires came up through the top right here right there's the wire and I just used my um, 564 drill bit to make that extra hole on each side so I made an extra hole there and an extra hole there now the um, instructions suggest that you wrap the wire around a lot of the uh, different connections what I did is that I have a little soldering kit and instead I did this for most of my wires. Let's see if you can see here. I'm going to try to get the focus going for you. Okay, there we go. So what I did is I just sanded the connections and then I used a small battery powered soldering iron and that way I just did a quick solder and that gave me much better connections and uh, what I used is this little uh, Radio Shack electric soldering iron and this thing almost merits a review on its own because it's powered by some AA batteries that go there in the back and then you just turn it on and when you press the little red button the light comes on and the tip heats up and that actually made it so much easier to make these connections uh, you just have to let it warm up good for maybe a good um, half a minute to a minute before it's ready to do the soldering and anyway so the setup is as follows I first took the, the two brushes and what I did is I, I soldered the wires on the bottom and then the wire comes out here and next to the bat and and into the battery terminal like that you saw me was soldered and then um, goes right in the battery box and then that one as well this battery box is just a piece that can come off very easily and it just goes right in there and what I did is that I took the brushes and I pushed them from underneath after I had soldered the wires to them and um, right now I've attached it to the to the boat with wire in three different points so it's 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 hard for me to show you the bottom of my of my uh, plate but really what I've got going on here is is nothing more than uh, the same type of soldering I just showed you on this side goes to the brushes and then the brushes are pushed from underneath through the plastic and they just stay there the um, it comes pre-cut and those two little slits are actually tight enough that it will hold the brushes there uh, quite nicely now the the other interesting bit that I did is since I had the soldering iron um, I did do the three winds 50 um, 50 turns a piece for each one of these three um, legs of the armature 
And what the instructions say is that you can stick a pencil in here to kind of keep the metal, um, the, uh, what are they called? The metal plates, but there's a name for them. Uh, they're called the armature plates. Anyway, so the, the 10 armature plates, you can kind of keep aligned with a pencil, and they have this one marking that you have to keep aligned as you're building it. And so when they're loose, you just stick a pencil through the armature plates and it keeps them aligned. And then you start with the spacer and the bump in the, um, in the shaft is right in there. And what you do is you push the back spacer through the shaft and then you kind of force it into that bump of the shaft and that holds the back in place and then you bring the templates and then you bring the front spacer and what I did is um, I took the the uh, what are called the armature contacts and you bend them, you gotta make sure you bend them almost 90 degrees but you bend them so that the curve is on the outside because when you put them on the shaft and the spacer they gotta be facing outwards and as I wrapped the armature uh, I just put a little bit of a, a soldering dot right there as well instead of wrapping the wire and that gave me some pretty good contact so I just took my needle nose, I, I did wrap a little bit, I took my my exacto knife and I um, shaved away a little bit of the clear coat on that wire and then I just put one dot of solder, of solder, solder and that did alright um, the um, end cap here of the brushes this tends to move a little, it's not the steadiest thing and then what you see is there is that I put a little bit of gr uh, grease on the shaft and that is to make sure that it spins freely once it's in the in the base, so let me show you what that looks like this is the way you put it together, after you have the armature in one in one plate, in one piece and you have the base with the um, with the brushes in place, what you want to do and let me see what I can do about holding this in place Honey, can you give me a hand and hold this? just point it at the... no, acá el teléfono just point it at the, at the picture and so what you want to do is you want to come along the back, get the back one in place then very gently put the brushes and the contacts together and then you just kind of push the whole thing in place and when you when you have it um, when you have it in place it should spin quite freely like this see there's very little friction and what I did is I took some some of my fill waterproof grease which I use on my bicycles and I put some of that bicycle grease at these points, one here and one there, just put a little bit of it, you don't want to get any you don't want to get any grease on the brushes, that part you want to avoid getting any grease on there but just where there's a little bit of friction so that you can uh, keep it moving freely and then the next step was to get the propeller on the shaft, so just push it really hard and it didn't want to stay on there, so what I did is I took a lighter and I heated just the end of the shaft and then when I pushed it in there it kind of melted a little and, and now it's on there really good then <clears throat> the next thing you want to do is make sure you get the the, um, the magnets in there and the way they go in is you kind of push them from the back and then lift the bottom part you push them forward and you need to make sure that they come forward all the way in here so the way that I've been doing is just kind of push that way and, and up that way so you push it back and forward a little then they go right into place you do the same for the other side push in a little bit that way and then you push back and, and up the back of the magnet okay and then the way what you should see when you look at it it's just a very tiny gap no more the telephone just a very tiny gap between the magnets 
and the armature and you can actually kind of push the magnet in a little bit as close as you can make that gap the faster and the better the motor will run just make sure you have no friction okay then once you have that in place the last step is to get your battery in there and I find that uh, it's actually a very reliable little motor now that it's put together I didn't build a switch into it, I just went ahead and as soon as you drop the battery in there it runs and the amazing thing is that I've been running this motor on this battery probably for two hours now and it's still running very well and I've been running it for a long time uh, you can barely see a bit of a spark in the brushes so you can see a little bit of a spark there Now, the motor runs extremely well and it's actually quite powerful. I did put it in the water. The only problem is that this hull is actually quite narrow and between the battery and everything that you need, it makes it pretty heavy. The instructions say to take the battery in here and actually stick it in the box and then put it in this space. But even so, it actually takes on a lot of water when you try. The motor will run even underwater. It has no problem and it, it has no fear of water. But the main problem is that this hull is not very good for actually supporting the weight of the boat. So if I find another toy boat, I may just uh, replace it and, and take this and put it on a different hull. But other than that, I'm very happy with the electric motor. And if this hull was a little wider, um, if it was just like an inch and a half wider, I'm sure it would be really, really good. But the way it is right now, it's a little too narrow to actually put in the bathtub and, and play with it. But we did try it. It kept taking water in, surprisingly enough, uh, through the sides here. It would, the motor would push and this would take in a little water. And then if you try to compensate and put weight at the nose, then water would come in the nose. So it didn't really work very well for playing in the bathtub with it. Uh, I think once they put the battery and counterweights and everything, it's actually quite heavy. So not very good for actual underwater use, but the motor itself runs phenomenal. Alright, hope you enjoyed. Bye-bye.